Oh, hey there. Come on in. We're just about to start. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a fun weekly podcast about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. I'm Rob, and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative and entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. Join us each week as we strive to help you with transforming your overall health and relationship with food through up to date, evidence based nutrition information. Should you avoid all carbs? What's the difference between simple and complex carbohydrates? What about prebiotics for our gut? How can we include more resistant starches in our day-to-day meals? Today we address these questions and discuss some simple and complex information about carbohydrates. Stay with us. Enjoying the show? You can help others find it and enjoy it too by giving us a five-star rating or review. If you feel like reaching out to us with a question or comment, you can send us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit our website at mywifethedietitian.com, as well as our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Enjoy the show. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian. Hello, Sandra. Take two there, Rob. Take two. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's not perfect every time, honey. <laughs> That's okay. Keep telling you that. <laughs> yes, I've heard that before. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> so I think in a previous episode, we talked about what's for dinner. Mm-hmm. And we talked about meal planning and meal prep and food prep. And part of that was the prepping for the carbohydrates or the starches or the yeah, that part of your plate, right? With yeah. the plate ratio and the little starchy bit. Exactly. The starchy bit. Exactly. So the rice, pasta, bread, bulgur, barley, quinoa, uh, like a grain, some sort of grain or um, complex carbohydrate. and uh, Potato fits there too, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. And it's about the size of your fist would be a good rule of thumb for people who want to know about portions. You know, like half the plate veggies... Um, that makes me laugh because usually, or the way it used to be anyway, maybe before people understood that was be like the whole plate would be pasta and then you'd have like some sauce on the top and that'd be your dinner. So well, like yeah. 80% I, of the plate would be the starch. You, right, right. So that's where like the portion control comes in. But we're going to talk about resistant starch and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about like what it is and what the benefits are and where you can find it in your food. Okay. Yeah, that's a new term. I haven't heard of resistant starch before. Well, you know, um, it's a type of carbohydrate that resists digestion. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why it's a resistant starch. It it resists digestion in the small intestine and it travels, it reaches the large colon or the large intestine. Okay. Uh, It will make more sense in a few minutes here once you've explained it a bit more, I think. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And it is actually, remember, we've talked about prebiotics and probiotics, but it is a type of prebiotic. That's why it's got a lot of hot press lately. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, because it it serves as a food source for the beneficial bacteria um, to create those short-chain fatty acids. The butrate is one probably you've heard of. Um. Yeah, maybe. It sounds familiar. It sounds like what you put in your lighter. Oh, no, that's butane. So this... <laughs> sorry. I'm, so funny. Butate? Is that what you call it? Yeah. Okay. Butrate. Well, it sounds the same, right? Yes. So, okay. So there's three types of carbohydrates. Okay. Do you mean You've like heard about simple. Simple and complex and then something else? And fiber. Oh, right. Okay. I keep forgetting that fiber is a carbohydrate. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, uh, you know, we can get like all technical and like chemistry biochemistry here about like so there's the simple carbs and it's a monosaccharide and a disaccharide oh yeah that makes total sense so monosaccharide is kind of like glucose glucose is a sugar molecule okay right okay and disaccharide is two sugar molecules together so for instance lactose is sugar from from a milk from milk from dairy or milk yeah yeah and it breaks down to glucose and galactose 
So was that a die saccharide then? Yeah, exactly. Because oh, okay. there's two. Okay. See, I see. look at you. Yeah, well, I didn't... <laughs> yeah, okay. That's an example. And so why is that important? Well, because, okay, there's three types of carbohydrates. There's simple, there's complex, and there's fiber. So the next one is complex. And it's same kind of thing. You remember the glucose, the little um, molecules? Mm -hmm. So a complex carbohydrate has a string of molecules. That it breaks down to. A long chain. Okay, so it's not one or two. So it's... that's why it's complex. Okay. It's got lots of like chains. Gotcha. And it's starch. Oh, and it's starch. Yeah, that's what the complex carbohydrate is. It's a starch. Okay, interesting. Does that make sense? Uh, I understand what you're saying. I don't know that I understand why it's a starch, but... Well, that's kind of... I just wanted to kind of give you a visual kind of image yeah, of like you have a single glucose molecule. It's mm -hmm. just, that's a simple. What's an example of a, a simple carbohydrate? Candy. Yeah, pop. I was going to say, yeah, those easy sugar ones that, yeah. It digests like instantly. Like, or, you know, you basically eat it or drink it and you're... Instant sugar. Instant sugar. Yeah, okay. It's a simple carbohydrate. Because it has a... Uh, the breakdown process is more simplified. Is that why? There's less to break down, so you get it there quicker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we have enzymes in our digestive tract and in our gut that helps to cleave these molecules apart. Okay. Um, so glucose would raise your blood glucose, right? So, mm -hmm. for instance, if someone has diabetes and they, their blood glucose goes too low, and they need something quick, mm -hmm. like lifesavers. Yeah, yeah. We're invented for that reason. Oh, interesting. Because it's a quick sugar. That's why they're called lifesavers. Exactly. Oh, I, I think I knew that. But yeah. yeah, it makes more sense hearing it in this explanation. Yeah, yeah. So that's a bit of a tangent there. But um, yeah, so the three types of carbohydrates, simple, complex, and fiber. And in the complex, one fits in where the starch is. So resistant starch. Okay. And then what about fiber? What does it look like? There's a uh, insoluble and soluble fiber. So it's basically indigestible part of plant foods. Oh, so like it doesn't break down, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we know that most people are not getting enough fiber, but 95% of the population are deficient in fiber. And I think we did a whole episode on fiber, episode 17. What's the scoop? What's the poop? What's the scoop poop? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little rhymey, rhymey title there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, we talked about how it's a nutrient, but it's, it's an anti-nutrient because it's, we're not actually getting nutrition from fiber, but we need it to help our whole digestion and to feel full, keep our blood sugar control, our blood cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It's like a cleaning type of, like, it's, it's really important in our gut health and our bowels and yeah. our overall system. It plays an important role. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's the three types. Simple, complex, where starch fits in, and fiber. All right. So with the resistant starch, as I mentioned, it's a type of carbohydrate that resists digestion in the small intestine. And it reaches the large intestine where the good bacteria gobble it up. Oh, okay. So it does break down, but not until further along. And it, it creates that prebiotic. Right, it's, right. It's a food for the... Probiotic. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. The good bacteria. You got it. It's a good thing I'm here today to help you out with some of these words. Huh? <laughs> exactly. It serves as a food source hmm. for the beneficial bacteria. And it creates that, those short-chain fatty acids, the butyrate that I mentioned. Right, right. All right. And then, so there's four types of resistant starch. So if we're going to get technical again, a little technical here. So where do you think you find resistant starches? Well, you were saying like uh, leftover pasta, rice and stuff, and it's the jelly kind of what it turns into the next day, isn't it? That's kind of the, is that it? That's, well, kind of, yeah. There's kind exactly, of sort of. yeah, you got it. Totally. That's what we're going to focus on today because there's four different types and one comes from like um, resistant starch one comes from whole grains and seeds and beans, legumes, lentils. Oh, so I see. A resistant type, resistant starch two is like green bananas and potatoes. And resistant three, starch three is uh, starchy foods that are cooked and then cooled. 
Okay, that's what I was describing. Yeah, like the potato, the pasta, the rice, the quinoa, and other grains, yep. bul uh, bulgur and barley, because the cooking process changes the chemical structure. Oh, right, right. And the resistant starch 4 is a resistant, it's a synthetic resistant starch that the food companies have developed and are in a lot of food products. That is, it acts like a prebiotic and it's a similar, um, it has similar action in the gut. And we can do this at home with your leftovers and with uh, pasta salads, like cold pasta. So you think of ways to get that resistant starch in, in your weekly intake. So is the fourth one that you mentioned, is that it's, that's not a good one because it's not natural? No, or, not necessarily. It's just a type. So there's four types. Okay. Yeah. And the cool thing is there's a lot of benefits. I think I mentioned about the gut health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What do you think? What do you think are some other benefits of having resistant starch? Other than gut health? Yeah, yeah. What? Remember we were talking about the glucose at the start and what it happens to the well, it probably controls your blood sugar a bit, right? You got it. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. You totally gave me that one. <laughs> well, I, I never would have got it. <laughs> blood sugar regulation because it slows the digestion process. Okay. So have you heard of the glycemic index? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you don't want me to ask you what it is, do you? Uh, I, I don't think I could explain it. I think I understand what it means, but I just don't think I could explain it. So if you eat... Um, candy, it will spike your blood sugar up right, quickly. Right. It's a simple carb. So foods that um, have a high glycemic index will be digested quickly. Right. And then that causes your blood sugar to go up and it causes your insulin to come out and help pull the sugar into the cell. So we probably want to have, we want to try to have lower glycemic index foods. But the whole problem with the glycemic index is typically people don't eat food in isolation. Mm -hmm. They usually eat it in a meal. Right. And so there's a lot of other things that affect the rate of digestion and absorption. Okay. Like fiber in our food, uh, protein in our food, fat in our food. Right. So a lot of these things can affect the rate of digestion. And resistant starch is another one. So it affects the rate of digestion. I see. Because it's a complex carbohydrate, so it slows things down or helps slow things down. Yeah, exactly. Helps with the blood con blood sugar control. You got it. Okay. You got it. Exactly. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. And then there's another benefit. So the first one we talked about was gut health because of the prebiotic that is a food source for those good bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then the blood sugar regulation with people with diabetes or just if you're wanting to keep your blood sugar in better control, uh, weight maintenance. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know why? I don't know. Okay. It's just because you feel fuller. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. It keeps yeah. you feeling fuller longer because of that slow digestion, the slow rate of absorption. It kind of hits the off button sooner so you don't keep eating and, yeah. ga and gaining weight. I see. Yeah, yeah. Just if you have foods that have resistant starch, that helps with keeping you feeling full longer. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. And then the, there's another benefit. Okay. Uh, cholesterol control. So helping with your blood cholesterol. So keeping the LDLs and the triglycerides in better range. Okay. Because of how it's... it's it's With the digestion. Okay. Yeah. And then that... I These are like the ramifications and the ripple effects is reduced risk of cardiovascular disease mm. because if you are always having simple carbohydrates and not enough of the fiber resistant starches then you could be having um, more blood sugar fluctuations right and then that could increase your risk for diabetes and cardiovascular disease and colorectal cancer too so getting that um, the fiber and the resistant starch in the diet helps with preventing colorectal cancer. Oh, good to know. So there's a lot of different benefits. Also, there's one last benefit that we didn't mention is the mineral absorption. It actually helps with 
absorption of magnesium and calcium when you eat foods that have resistant starch. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. there's lots of benefits, eh? Yeah, it is. And, you know, there's been, I think, in the media, there's like, you know, we've talked about lectins and, and oxalates and phytates. They're in plant foods, like whole grains and legumes, but they've kind of the whole negative press about them has been overblown. Okay. And actually the resistant starches are quite helpful in all these benefits that we just mentioned. Well, there you go. So how do we do this in our... Um, yeah, like how do we bring this home? What do we do at home? How do we in- incorporate all this this chemistry and bio, whatever you called it, into our uh, into our dinner? Yeah. Into our diet? Yeah, what's yeah, for that, dinner? That was kind of my next question is like, <laughs> this is, we got to bring it down into a practical... Uh, down to a practical place here. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. Like um, they've done studies to show the difference between fresh pasta versus cold pasta versus reheated pasta. When you say fresh, you mean like freshly cooked? Freshly cooked. So you cook it up and then you eat it. And okay. what's the what's happening with um Yeah, like what, what are digestion. the effects of that? And then cold pasta would be the same stuff, but eaten the next day. Mm-hmm. And then what was your third one? The same stuff reheated. That's right. The next day. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And the reheated and the cold are really good. And the white pasta even acts like whole wheat pasta. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like, don't eat it the first time. Just cook it, put it in the fridge no, and then eat no, it the no. next day. <laughs> no. Then it's good for you. <laughs> no. Yeah. People get so dogmatic about everything, I right? Know, right? And it's like... The whole point of food and nutrition is balance and variety, really. Like that is like what I live by. Not restricting and counting calories and and not being so like, oh, we can't eat the fresh pasta and we got to eat it tomorrow, the leftover. Mm -hmm. um, But that's what it says on TikTok, right? (laughs) So people are so confused, including me. I mean, it's, yeah, there's a lot of confusion out there. So, yeah. And, you know, um, when I said it, it was like it was whole wheat pasta, I meant the response with the blood sugar. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, if you add oil to the water when you're cooking your pasta, it actually has a better response even. If you add oil when you're cooking it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The original time that you're cooking huh. it. So, But you can use this principle with leftover potatoes or pasta or rice or quinoa, barley, any of those grains that nice. we mentioned. Right on. So those it, it has the resistant starch because of the chemical structure after cooking and then cooling and reheating or just eating them cold. Hmm. Um, I, there was a, somebody mentioned rice, like the... To freeze your rice instead of storing it in the fridge. Yeah. And okay, so there is a spore that is in rice. And so... After you cook it, it should be eaten. And if it's at room temperature for too long, then the spores can reproduce and make you sick. It's only about 2 to 5% of all cases of food poisoning is from uh, rice that's not stored properly. Okay. Um, so you eat your rice and then you don't leave it on the stove for hours and hours. You should, uh, actually, if you put it in a shallow pan and cool it that way, and then just put it into the fridge or into the freezer, that would be a better way to store it. Right. Okay. Um, so I think maybe people just think, oh, you can just like leave rice on the counter after a meal cause it's not protein. So you think, oh, you know, it's not going to go bad, but it does have these, um, bacillus serious spores they sound pretty serious <laughs> yeah and they, so they do withstand heat so they can live on and they after don't. the after you cooked it they can they're still there yeah 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 so um just storing your rice properly by not leaving it sitting out for over two hours okay and how long can you leave it in the fridge is there, cause I think, Couple days. I think the concern was making big batches of rice for like the whole week and it's not safe to like leave this big batch of rice in the fridge all week cause Ooh. it'll, I don't know, bad things will happen. Right. Okay. I get that. So yeah, you'd um, put it into smaller containers, cool it down and put it into smaller containers. Does in that the, make sense? In the fridge? Yep. So the it'll, fridge. it'll be fine in the fridge for the week. 
if you've cooled it down after you've cooked it. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. But it, I don't think it's, again, I think that was a TikTok. Probably. Something out there that kind of blew it out of proportion. And sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But you can definitely get some resistant starch by leftover rice, leftover pasta, leftover potato, uh, as I mentioned, quinoa or couscous, bulgur, barley, any of those starches, and it will be a benefit. There you go. And so the other ones that we mentioned in the beginning, like the the resistant, like you said, there was four different ones. Are those, how do you get it out of those ones? Like, because you were saying like bananas and, and, uh, yeah, that's whole a grains type. or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just have it in it. They're not, you don't have to do anything different to it to get the resistant starch to come out of it the way you do with the pasta and the rice. Yeah. I see. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I think the most common and the easiest way to incorporate it is just using the leftover pasta or the leftover grains. Gotcha. Right on. Well, that was quite a lesson. Yeah. Well, if you're confused, let us know. We'll uh, shoot us an email. Let us know how that uh, turned out for you. I also wanted to just mention like when you're buying rice, what to look for. And I think we'll do a whole nother episode on label reading. I know we have an episode on that. But yeah, when you're looking at any grain and they have a, a label, look at the nutrition facts on the back and compare apples to apples in the serving size. So some might have a serving size of a quarter cup, like 45 grams. Whereas others might be like half a box, which is like maybe 85 grams. So it depends on the serving size. And we'll get into that in another episode. But you want to look for fiber. So that's really important when you're looking at grains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So when I do the grocery tours, that's what we look at is how to increase the fiber in your overall diet. And so ways to do that is with the grain products, the whole grains. There you go. We did an episode on leaky gut with... Projecta Apta. That's right. Episode 73 was all about leaky gut and how to... Um, we talked all about strategies to help. Also, we have a Nutrition Nuggets um, 37 on Buddha bowl and grain bowls. So that would be a, a use for some of these leftover grains that have the resistant starches. Yeah, there you go. Couple of good ideas. Yeah. And also we did one on constipation. It was episode 116, all about bowel health and constipation. And that's a good reason to try to get more fiber in the diet and including resistant starches also in your daily intake mm -hmm. or your weekly intake. That'll give you something to think about too while you're sitting there waiting. <laughs> Very funny. Think about the rice in the fridge. And... <laughs> yeah. What, remember when I said there's three types of carbohydrates, the simple, complex, and the fiber, and mm -hmm. the starches fit into the complex? Well, part of that is the starch in plant foods, or like complex carbohydrates, but also there's starch or complex carbohydrates in our glycogen, and that's the animal or human form of storage of carbohydrates. It's our muscle glycogen. And we've talked about this before and how to maintain lean muscle. And this is a really good quote from, remember Doug Cook? He was a guest on our episode, episode 95 on brain health. Mm -hmm. Well, he wrote this book, Nutrition for Canadians for Dummies. You oh, know, right all on. those books. The, the yellow and black yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right <laughs> it's on. awesome. And it's great because um, it talks about ways your body uses carbohydrates on page 102. And he, there's a quote, it says, a diet that provides sufficient amounts of carbohydrates keeps your body from eating its own muscles. That's why a carbohydrate rich diet is sometimes described as protein sparing. Right. Because your body isn't needing to eat the muscle to get its fuel. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the thing that I see with a lot of the kind of restrictive, kind of dogmatic diets out there that cut carbs like almost to zero, well, that's what happens is you can lose lean muscle and it really throws your whole body out of whack. But the number on the scale goes down, so it must work. Maybe. That's, but, that's a joke. Short, short that's term, That's a total right? joke. That's what I mean. People look at the scale, oh, I'm losing weight, right on. But it's like, no, you're losing muscle. Yeah, you're losing weight, but it's your muscle a lot of times too, so. 
That's right. And I'm going to read that one more time, that quote, just just to sink in here. All right. A diet that provides sufficient amounts of carbohydrates keeps your body from eating its own muscles. That's why a carbohydrate-rich diet is sometimes described as protein-sparing. You've had some clients that you've encouraged them to eat more food, and then they've lost weight because of that, right? Yeah. 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 Well, because if you're if you're changing the balance and the nutritional quality of your diet, yes, your body's going to run better, more efficiently. It's going to get the nutrient it need, the nutrients it needs and also the fiber. So including more fiber rich foods and, you know, you have to crunch, you know, that's the whole thing with fiber too is you're crunching, you're needing to chew it, you need to use your your jaws. Yeah. Your teeth. <laughs> you have to use your jaws to break it down, break down those the structure. And resistant starch is similar. Like it's it the chemical structures are changing because the food's been cooked and then cooled and then eaten. And then it as I mentioned, it is resistant to the digestion in the small intestine. So it um it the resistant starch molecules reach the large intestine or the large bowel, and it serves as a food fuel to the healthy bacteria. So there you go. Yeah. So lots to discuss. And uh, maybe we'll do another episode soon on the reading labels and the nutrition facts to figure out how to find foods that have higher levels of fiber. Yeah, good idea. Wouldn't hurt. We've done that before the nutrition labels, but it wouldn't hurt to have a little refresher because that was actually years ago at this point that we did that. Yeah, it was episode it, nine or something. Oh, that's way right. Back. Yeah, on food labels, but we can specifically do grains. Yeah, exactly. Good idea. Awesome. Well, that is it for this episode. If you want more information, there's tons on the website. Go there. There's a great blog. Lots of articles on the blog these days. If you have questions for us, you can email us at mywifetherd at gmail.com. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. That's our weekly newsletter. Lots of information, links. Uh, we're going to start sharing recipes on there as well and some uh, food prep ideas that, that we like to do here. So you can sign up for that while you're at the website. Uh, it's mywifethedietitian.com. That's the address for the website. And you can also find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Lots going on there. You can comment on there too. Send us, uh, you know, some thoughts, what you like, what you don't like. You know, just, it's good for us to get some feedback about what we're doing. And you can also rate and review the show rate from your podcast player. That's a great way to do it too. You can either just uh, use the star system or uh, leave a written review as well, what, whatever uh, works for you there. And share with a friend. Friends like to know what you're listening to, especially when you're smiling and laughing when you're listening to us. They'll be like, hey, that looks like a good one. What do you got on in there? Let me let me have some of that too. So yeah, share with a friend. It's always good to share the love. We all want to be healthy. And I think that is it. We'll be back on Wednesday with Nutrition Nuggets. So until then, have a great week, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. Thank you.